building a differential, your main caps have to go back in the same place. They're line board, just like you'd find on a cam or on a crankshaft. And there's a big machine that comes in this way and it machines it all the way across. So this matches this. The races sit in there, they're nice and tight and they're even on both sides. So the cap needs to stay in the same spot, same direction when you put it back together. Now these, unlike the caps, if I change sides with them and I line up the threads, it won't matter. Now we're going to install the uh, pilot bearing. One of the reasons the 4 Dynage is such a popular rear end, especially in racing, it has three bearings on the pinion. You have an inner, an outer, and a pilot bearing. This helps deflection of the pinion and a better contact pattern with the ring gear under acceleration. As you accelerate, deflection on the pinion is the pinion driving the ring gear away from itself. Then we have a clip. Clip is just a retainer for this. It needs to be flush against the bearing. On the carrier bearings, there's a certain taper. Taper goes out. For these carrier bearings, your journal sticks up above this. So if you press it flat, it stops there. We've taken an old bearing, took the cage off, honed it out so it fits over our journal. Matches up perfect. Also, always give it a spin. Make sure we're not offset. So if you press it flat, you have this gap here and the bearing's not seated. You can see how much of a difference. So we're gonna take our adapter, our puck. Even though your gear is machined from the factory, you wanna take some kind of flat file and all we're gonna do is go over the top of the ring gear, make sure there's no burrs or anything. <laughs> Rotate, 45. If we don't do this, and there's a high point or two in this thing, when you put it on the carrier, your backlash can change. It'd almost be like the, the gear's doing this on your carrier. Same thing. For ring gear bolts, you always want to use some kind of thread locking compound because you don't want these bolts backing off. I start with two, match the bolts up. We're gonna seat the ring gear on the carrier. This will be all smooth and no gap here. What I use is a couple two by fours, and you can see, already has a ring gear marks in it. You want soft. You don't want to damage the ring gear. It will chip and break before it smashes anything. Then we're gonna take our press piece. Do not put it on the bearing, put it on the journal. So the reason I'm using the press, we talked about the interference between the pause attraction and the inside of the ring gear. This has to be sucked up together and this is the best way without stripping bolts. This allows you to slowly and evenly seat that. Torque is based on a bolt size diameter. So these ring gear bolts are 7 16 So they take 60 to 65. If they were 3 8 it'd be less. It'd be 45 to 50. Three. 
And this just assures that you hit every single ring gear bolt. We're all seated. When you're pressing your inner pinion bearing, say if you have a piece of pipe, first thing you wanna check is this can go all the way down and the inside diameter is slightly larger than the outside diameter of the pinion. You wanna make sure your pipe touches here. It doesn't get between the pinion and the pinion bearing race and or the cage on the pinion bearing. Put it on the stem of the pinion and drive the bearing onto the pinion. As you can see, our inner pinion bearing is seated. We have two races, which is the inner and outer pinion bearings. A stock pinion support has the same size bearings, inner and outer. This is Daytona. Daytona, they have the same as the stock outer, but they go to a much bigger inner. Inner pinion bearing race going in, no lubrication. It's gonna sound nasty like that. So the pinion bearing races, you wanna go in dry. You don't want this with a preload spinning in that housing. It'll tear that pinion support up. You want this race seated all the way down to that ledge. Be on the lookout for part two of this video where Eric breaks down the assembly process with tips and tricks he uses to build hundreds of Ford 9-inch third members each year. If you're interested in seeing more build breakdowns or have further questions, let us know in the comments below. If you learned something new or liked what you saw, tap that like button. And remember to subscribe to be notified about the next fun project in the rear wheel performance garage.